All right, first things first, I need to apologize because I said I was gonna upload a video every Sunday and... I failed you. You trusted me. I failed you. And I didn't just fail you, I failed myself. One of the main reasons I made this promise to myself was because I wanted to teach myself how to be diligent and resilient like John Wick in the John Wick movies. John. It's a matter of focus, commitment, sheer will, something you know very little about. But over these last two weeks, I ended up succumbing to outside influences on my life that evoked emotions in me that I just simply wasn't able to deal with. To be fair though, the reason that I didn't upload two weeks ago was because circumstances just didn't allow me to. I had to dog slash house it for a friend, which was awesome by the way. And so I was cut off from basically all the equipment that I need to write, shoot, and edit a video. So I'll cut myself some slack on that one. But as for last week, I don't really have any excuses. Like I said in my last video, I've been dealing with this anger that I just haven't been able to control. And last week, it completely got the better of me and I completely capitulated on everything again. But fortunately, I was able to have a conversation with myself. And I mean that very literally. You'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. And I was able to figure some things out. And no, it's not crazy to have literal out loud conversations with yourself, okay? I looked it up and it's apparently very normal. So stop looking at me like that. But if you thought I was crazy before, then you're about to think I'm clinical because I decided to flesh out that conversation, script it, shoot it, edit it, and I'm about to show it to you right now, so. But anyway, without further ado, I give you basically what's been happening in my head over the last month. Enjoy. Okay, so I'm angry. I've basically been in a perpetual state of anger for the last month. Okay, so why are you angry? Well, I've hinted at it a few times, but I guess it's because I feel betrayed. By who? I don't know. Myself, I guess. How do you mean? It's tough to explain. It's like there are two me's. There's an active me, and then there's a passive me. Interesting. Can you elaborate? The active me is the one that's in control. He's the one that's sitting here and talking to you right now. I mean, he is me. The one doing all the thinking, talking, writing, eating, sleeping, exercising, etc. I mean, he's basically me in this physical world. That's the act of me. Okay, so if this is you, then who or what is the passive you? I don't know. He's kind of like this abstract concept. He's always there, but I can't always sense him. But when he does decide to make his presence known, He's impossible to ignore. I guess, imagine a puppet and puppeteer dynamic where the active me is the puppet and the passive me is the puppeteer. Except the puppeteer doesn't forcefully control where the puppet goes. Instead, the puppeteer emphatically makes it known which direction the puppet should go. But the decision is still ultimately left up to the puppet. I know this sounds completely insane. It really doesn't. I mean, it sounds crazy to me, so I don't know how it wouldn't sound crazy to you. Well, it just sounds like there are two distinct parts of you that are in some kind of conflict. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But if the active me is me, then how do I identify the passive me? What do I call it? Hmm, the other you. Maybe your intuition? Yo, yes, thank you. I like that. Somehow that just makes sense it feels appropriate yeah my intuition good i'm glad it makes sense so that means that the two parts of you that are in conflict are your physical self and your intuition correct yeah i think so and so who betrayed who my intuition betrayed me and how did he do that well basically in the past i feel like my intuition would lead me into difficult situations but if i managed to get through them i would have something to show for it I'd get a step closer to my goals. But recently, I feel like my intuition has been leading me into difficult situations where even if I manage to make it through, I don't have anything to show for it. And sometimes I even feel like I'm farther away from my goals. I recently just made a video about it because I honestly don't know what else to do about the situation. Yes, I remember. About the fasting, right? Exactly. That's actually a perfect example. Because in that scenario, my intuition made me fast for three days before a vacation. Even though the physical me, the thinking me, 
tried to convince him not to make me do it. But like I said, when he makes his presence known, he's impossible to ignore. So I did the fast and took a step forward. But by the end of the vacation, I'd taken 10 steps back, which is exactly what I, the physical me, said was gonna happen. So why not just ignore your intuition? Because it's the same intuition that made me do my first fast. The one that helped me get over my acid reflux. Basically the exact same thing happened. I was planning a fast and one day I woke up and my intuition was like, you know what, we should do this now. And I was like, absolutely not, I'm not ready. But like I said, impossible to ignore. So I acquiesced. And lo and behold, 36 hours later, my acid reflux was gone. And you're sure that these two instances involved the same influence. Positive. And you're not willing to entertain the possibility of ignoring this influence? I tried. I have. And I felt like the actions I took in spite of my intuition resulted in more severe repercussions. Repercussions? Yeah, and I specifically mean repercussions, not punishments. Why draw the distinction? Because of the connotation. Punishments are inherently negative. Repercussions aren't. I never felt punished for going against my intuition. Even though I didn't listen to it, I was still heading in the same direction. It's just that the path that I took by not listening to it was slightly more treacherous. So despite it being difficult, you still believe that it was ultimately in your best interest to listen to your intuition. That's what I used to believe and what I still want to believe, but I'm finding it hard to maintain that belief after this last month. It makes sense. But what you're saying is that you still want to believe that this influence is ultimately helping you, correct? Absolutely. So if you had to frame your intuition's influence on you over this past month in a positive way, how would you do it? I don't really know. That's what I've been trying to figure out this whole time. The only thing that I can come up with is that maybe it's testing me. Hmm. How is it testing you? I mean, it keeps putting me in situations where I have no choice but to make a decision that will directly sabotage my routine. And my routine is essential to me for maintaining equilibrium. When I'm able to maintain balance in my routine, I feel capable of doing whatever is required of me. And when I don't, everything falls apart. And this past week, everything fell apart, which is why I didn't upload a video on Sunday. So you think it's directly attacking your routine as a test? Essentially, but I don't think that's its job. Doesn't life already test me enough? Doesn't life already throw me for a loop every opportunity it gets? So shouldn't my intuition only serve to help me solidify this routine that it helped me to establish in the first place? Isn't that exactly what it's doing? I mean, yeah, I guess. But it's doing it in this like, I'm gonna throw you in the deep end of the pool and hope you don't drown kind of way. As opposed to, man, I don't know, maybe like a take me to the shallow end of the pool and teach me the basics first kind of way. You said your intuition helped you to establish this routine in the first place, no? Yeah, so would it be fair to say that that was your intuition's way of teaching you the basics? <laughs> uh, fair point. So has life tested you in the same way that your intuition tested you last month? Yes, these last three weeks I've been in situation after situation where I've had to make decisions that have made it extremely difficult to maintain my routine. Do you regret being in those situations? Not at all. There was a lot of babysitting, dog sitting, and just general interaction with people that I care about. They were situations that I hope to find myself in more, actually. Okay. And up until this past week, you actually did manage to maintain some semblance of your routine, correct? Despite all of these new situations. I mean, yeah, mostly, but it just it wasn't as effortless as it used to be. That's understandable. But do you think that you would have been able to maintain your routine through these new situations if you didn't first experience that large setback in June and learn how to bounce back from that. I mean, it's impossible to say, really. I might have been able to, but also knowing me and my tendency to quit on everything when things get tough, it's also very possible and maybe even more likely that I wouldn't have been able to maintain my routine. So is it fair to say that that situation in June was preparing you for what was about to come. Uh, I mean, as much as I don't want to admit it, yeah, I guess that's fair to say. Probably more than fair, actually. If I'm being honest, it's probably more accurate to say that that's what happened. Okay, well, I feel that I must emphasize that you don't have to perceive it this way. But if we take everything that you've said up until this point, it would seem that this is the most appropriate way 
to perceive the situation. This perception maintains the puppet and puppeteer dynamic. This perception allows you to maintain your belief that your intuition is ultimately here to help you. And finally, this perception is consistent with how your intuition has operated in the past, leading you into difficult situations where if you manage to make it through, you will have something to show for it. So I must ask now, after an entire year of living in a haze of anger and apathy, do you now feel like you have something to show for that labor? Do you now feel like you've taken a step closer to your goal? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And what is that step you've taken? Solidify and maintain the routine. It is essential. It was never easy, but it was much simpler when there were no distractions. But now, distractions are setting in. Situations continue to arise where the maintenance of this routine will be jeopardized. And these are situations that I hope to find myself in more often. So it is paramount to now learn to adhere to this routine so that I can participate in the activities I desire with the people that I care about without damaging myself in the process. That sounds like a good plan. I just have one final question for you. What? Yeah, 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 go ahead. You mentioned earlier that there were at least two distinct parts of you that were in conflict, correct? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. So if you identify as the active, physical you, then who do you think I am? Wait, what? Yeesh, having a full-on conversation with yourself in your head like that? That boy needs some help. No, he needs some milk! But yeah, this was super cathartic for me. My sister, who is an incredible writer and researcher, told me about how writers don't always have a set destination when they begin writing. Sometimes the story just moves through them, as if they were just the medium for the story and not necessarily the creator of it. And writing this script felt a lot like that. I didn't have any idea where this was going when I started writing. But by the time I was done, I had a script where both of the characters were basically trying to resolve all of my issues. And when I was done editing the conversation, it literally felt like I had a weight lifted off my shoulders. I felt lighter than I have in the last month. And that was a really, really cool experience to go through. I don't always express myself or deal with my emotions in the most productive ways. In fact, I rarely do. So being able to write, shoot, and edit videos that allow me to do just that has been absolutely essential in keeping me from slipping back into some harmful habits. So yeah, I hope I can continue to do this, and I'm definitely gonna try to get back to posting every Sunday. But anyway, that's gonna be it for this one. As always, thank you so much for hearing me out. I truly wish you the best going forward, and don't be afraid to talk to yourself every once in a while. You might be surprised by what you have to say. But anyway, take care of yourself, and I will see you in the next one. Peace, and be easy.